Morning Church, this is Heather. Today we're going to be speaking to Becky Morales from Real Options who uh, runs the Rachel's Vineyard. Uh, just a quick introduction. Becky's been working for Real Options for quite a while. She's uh, She'll tell you what position she's got. And she also runs the Real Options, the Rachel's Vineyard uh, retreats that we do. Um, as Palo Alto First Christian Church, we support her ministry um, and we support real options um, and as everybody should know in our church if anybody wants to go to the retreat this the church has a scholarship for anybody that would like to go and then if there's any uh, finances left over at the end of the year we we give a, a love offering to the real the rachel's vineyard before i start i'd like to pray and then we'll dive in and ask mm -hmm. becky some questions heavenly father we thank you for this uh, opportunity to share in ministry with Becky and all she does. And we are looking forward to all um, you've got in store for this ministry and for this church as we uh, come together uh, as in unity. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So yeah, hi, Becky. How are you, how are you doing? How's your week, your year going? Good, just finished another retreat. Just uh, not last week, but the week before. I'm still kind of reeling from that. It was such an incredible retreat that we had. Um, yeah, but I'm doing really well. Thank you for Good. asking. Good. And what's been happening over the last year since we've been uh, helping? Obviously, you're growing without us, but with us, uh, what's been happening? First up, I just want to thank Palo Alto Church for just inviting me. You guys have done such an incredible job uh, with bringing actually people from your church to the retreat, especially Pastor Piper here has just been fire for our ministry and uh, you know, when I first started this, I am the director of the HOPE program. We do retreats and online support groups. Um, when I first started doing this, you know, I was pulling teeth to get people to come to the retreat and I could barely do four. Mm. The majority of them is three because a lot of them I had to shut down one retreat because no one was re was re registering. Um, but um, in this last year, in 2023, we got such a high demand. We went up to five retreats, all full. Um, then this year, we're up to six retreats. Um, the one that's coming up September 27th, 29th will be our fourth retreat. They've all been full, um, okay. which will be our actually our fifth. fifth. That's right, our fifth retreat. And then we have another retreat November 8th through the 10th. Yeah. Our highlight is the fact that, you know, they're exploding. Um, mm. A lot of people from uh, First Christian Palo Alto Church has come to this retreat. And, you know, I just want to reiterate one thing is that this is not necessarily a retreat for people who have reproductive loss. This is for anyone who has loss. Mm. Uh, we do around 16 to 20 retreatants that come from all different demographics of healing. The majority of those who attend have experienced some of these things. Abortion, miscarriage, infertility, stillbirth, divorce, abuse of any kind, and death of a loved one. This retreat creates a safe and confidential space to reconcile with disenfranchised grief. Just to tell you a little bit, what is disenfranchised grief? Disenfranchised grief is a person who has experienced a loss that is not recognized, acknowledged, or mourned by society. People who experience disenfranchised grief may feel like they don't have the freedom to openly express their grief. Um, mm. And this can make it very difficult to process, but that is where we come in in these retreats. We create a safe space uh, for anyone who's had any kind of grief, um, even if it is reproductive loss. We have people who come for divorce. Mm. And I think that has been a huge highlight of our retreats is we're widening our net um to so many different kinds of of grief and i know as we're talking to the church right now every single person who's listening to this have had some kind of loss and grief mm. um, so that has been a huge highlight for us yeah with these retreats Thank you, Becky, because I was actually just about to say, could you explain what the retreat was? Because I, <laughs> sometimes I say, oh, I was at the retreat at the weekend and right, right. People say, oh, my goodness, you're always having a retreat. Uh, it's not it's not your typical spa weekend. No, but but, but we do. 
bring Jesus into uh, the place of hurt and pain. And, and as you said, it's, it's all pain and everybody's been through some kind of pain. Absolutely. Uh, but, yeah. And you said, I mean, the highlight is that a, that it's growing with people because of, and the, the highlight for us is that we see more people getting help and breakthrough and freedom. Absolutely. And lifting burdens of pain from their life. So it's, it's, that's the, that's the highlight and the reward. Um, Absolutely. You know, we, you, me both. And I think it's kind of like an addiction because people come in so broken Yes. On Friday, because that's when we started, which is we started on a Friday to inform 4.30. We started on a hard 5 p.m. And um, then we end on Sunday around 3 p.m. People come in broken, unsure why they're there. They're angry. And when they leave, they leave um, free. Yeah. They leave at peace, acceptance, yeah. closure. Yeah. Um, so, and that's why we love doing these retreats. And I just want to say, you know, we've had so many people who have come through the church and I have said this again, but I just want to say thank you so much for your support. Um, it has been such a humongous blessing mm -hmm. for us as um, a team to be able to bring people in and saying they're being paid for. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's it's a blessing because I don't have the hugest budget, <laughs> so um, it's 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 a a huge blessing. And you know, I just want to say this. Yesterday, I just um, was talking to a young lady who um, had been to a clinic a few days ago. We started talking, and she told me about her abortion that she had at fourteen, which was forced on her by her mother. And then at 16, she had a stillborn. Mm. From there, she, you know, she started making poor decisions because of the fact of the trauma that she had when she was a child, even getting into relationships with other women because of the fact that she knew it was safer mm. to be with women than men because she knew if she was with women, mm. she wouldn't get pregnant. She even admitted that to me. Um, and I remember just going through this and how God was just wooing her. Mm -hmm. And in the end, she had $5 to her name. Mm -hmm. And, um, I could tell she was just one of those people. I've talked to people day in and day out mm -hmm. and there was not like for me or mm -hmm. she just was going through a rough spot. And, um, I said, I got you. Mm -hmm. And I just registered from behind. And I said, she goes, how much is it going to cost? I said, nothing i'm gonna bless you and she started sobbing so these are life-changing retreats and people get saved mm, yeah <laughs> delivered yeah so set free set yeah. free so you pouring into this financial fund and funding people you yeah. are literally um, giving people freedom. And just like you said, so I, I, it's so important um, to, to, to give to this financial fund and, and bring people here, you know, I, me and Heather say this a lot, <clears throat> you know, everyone out there who, who has a heart to, for the Lord and want to be used by the Lord. And a lot of people say, I want you to use me, but <laughs> just not here. Yeah. <laughs> I got this past father, you know, but don't, don't touch me here. I'm, I'm okay here. Yeah. You know, but the Lord's like, the more I heal you, the more capacity you have to heal others. Yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, and I say this still all the time, hurting people, hurt others, mm -hmm. heal people, heal others. The more healing you have, the more capacity you have to heal others, to pour into others. So even if you have not come to a retreat, anyone we encourage you mm. want to come and I, I i say to the church all the time it's addictive it's watching the lord work in people's lives is addictive and as you said we <laughs> cry out for miracles hey lord we want to see healings we want to see miracles uh, but most of us don't know where to go to to do it you know uh, and often it is a stepping out in faith and just when the lord pushes us to pray for someone we, we might see a miracle there but you know, he's always leading us into the more. And often we feel incapacitated and unqualified. 
and the retreat is a place where uh, you can go and see it in action and if you're like have like me and privileged to go on the and help uh, be on the team then you see it more regularly and it encourages my faith then to ask for more of course. but I, um yeah i was gonna say um i wanted to let palo alto first christian know that every miracle that's happening at the retreat center is actually if you like added to the pafc account because you support the ministry, the, the, the souls that are being set free, the uh, freedoms that are happening, the salvations that are happening, belong to us as much as they belong to um, sure, Rachel's absolutely. Vineyard. And that's the wonderful thing about the kingdom. You might not be able to go and work a retreat, but if you're giving is you putting your, your foot in and saying, I, I want to help there. And so it, it's right. the Lord sees it as... Um, us, us giving to a, a mission, a ministry that is is bringing breakthrough, and that breakthrough is counted to yourself. So if we talk about miracles, claim them and say, I think I could actually pray a little bit more because I heard the possibilities of God. Absolutely. Um, Becky, is there, a, I'm going to ask you for some prayer requests for us. We look sure. to over your ministry for this month. September is going to be your month. And of course, there's the retreat coming up. So we'll also be praying for the upcoming retreat. So mm -hmm. do you have anything? I'm actually going to write this down because um, sure. we'd like to put it on the weekly email as well. So absolutely. What, have you got like four things that you're really um, striving for or praying for or hoping for from the Lord? Um growing this ministry i think one of our things is not a lot of people not many people know about this ministry and so to grow it and to have more retreats but to have more retreats we need more money mm -hmm. <laughs> to do that mm -hmm. so yeah that is a huge request for for mm -hmm. us as a team to to get more money more funds to have more retreats my my goal, my heart, my desire is uh, by 2025 to have another retreat. So have seven retreats next year. Um, that is a huge thing. My other um, thing I'd like to talk about that we need prayer for is um, prayer. Mm. I mean, not <laughs> prayer, like mm. time. our last retreat, we started out with 16 people. Four of them went home because of an emergency or sickness, mm -hmm. and it was completely demonic. I mean, they were fine until they got there, and uh, it has just been warfare mm -hmm. one after the other because we are making such a huge mm -hmm. difference in our retreats. The enemy is just going after this ministry, mm -hmm. and so what we're actually doing is we're going to be creating a team that will be on the retreat site to pray uh, so you want and, you want twofold you want people to be praying for you and then you'd like people to pray on a prayer team prayer. or to have a team ready to pray great yes yeah at the retreat center and even if you're at, not at the retreat center to be like there on call to be praying at all times mm -hmm. we do have a prayer map and for any of you who do have a heart for prayer, I can send it to you. You can sign up for a slot to pray. And, and that is another great way to be a part of the breakthrough because we can't do anything without prayer. Absolutely. And so it is impossible to please God without faith. Mm -hmm. And so your faith, your prayer, your breakthrough mm -hmm. is a part of our breakthrough. So yeah. um, that is a, a, a huge thing it is prayer um, and funds and um just protection that's another thing just that our team would be covered by the blood our retreatants would be covered by the blood we just have so much warfare going on all the time so um threefold funds more funds mm -hmm. uh more prayer and protection mm -hmm. what about you personally becky in in your own personal life i mean uh, you're allowed to ask for you you know you're the head of the of the ministry is it personally is there anything that you would love us to pray for um yeah uh clarity wisdom i am pouring into people day in and day out like yesterday i was just talking to my husband like uh talked to three people made them all cry <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you like me then <laughs> yeah, exactly. so um 
you, when you're talking to people all day long and they're pouring out their heart and you hear hard stories and where they're at, it, it does get to you. Um, so that's an end. You have a tendency to sometimes even be numb because you yeah. kind of yes. are doing this day in and you start going through the motions. Um, so yeah, for me is clarity, wisdom that the Lord would even ignite my heart uh, mm. for this ministry, even in a deeper way, because this is my calling, my purpose this is what uh, I was born to do. Um, so I love this ministry. So yeah, that'd be huge. And actually, I was just thinking, because I know some of the needs of the ministry myself, is more people being available, like we always have to have a therapist, we always need a worship leader, we always need the nurse, just like making that, uh, I was just thinking a good prayer would be that there is a, a always a supply of those people. We have lots of people that good. want to do retreats. And they're often not available when the retreat is there. Absolutely. Taking time off work and things. It's because every yeah. almost everybody volunteers. So just oh, like, I, was, I was just thinking that's probably a good prayer request for for the yeah. I mean, we always there's we always want people to be there as leaders, but there's often there's some key people that you, you need a a therapist, you need a nurse, you need, and so they're the people that are um the hardest to fill. So yeah, I, I mean I I'm That's a huge thing. Me, Thank you for letting me know. And also, we are trying to grow our Spanish-speaking community. Oh, that's so good. that's so we want to eventually start doing retreats in Spanish. And you know, we're very blessed, but majority of retreats all across the nation are in Spanish mm -hmm. uh, because it's um it, because it's a huge need in with the Spanish-speaking community with trauma, reproductive loss, talk about disenfranchised grief with mm. the Spanish speaking community. They don't do mourning or, or, or a grief mm. or anything. They just move forward even more uh, mm. than us Western, not Western, but uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. Americans, I guess you would say. Or, uh, so, um, but uh, that is a huge need, you know, and I just want to encourage, we are trying to launch back up our support groups that are online. So mm -hmm. that's another, we want to grow. That is another umbrella um, of our hope program. Cause a lot of people who don't come to a retreat or a retreats too much, but they'll say, I'll go to a, a support group, an online support group, which we have every Thursday at six or day, seven 30. Mm -hmm. um, and so people will come to a support group and that is where they're able to get their feet wet and share their story, talk to other safe people. And then after they do that a few times, then they come to a retreat. Mm -hmm. So um, support groups are incredibly successful. Mm -hmm. We have so much fruit and we want to grow it even more. And it's another great way to talk to people about our retreats. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's another uh, huge. Prayer. You've got plenty of prayer requests. So that's good. Yes, this is good. It means things are growing, things are moving. Yeah, like absolutely. Exponentially, where you can't keep up, and that's why love it. Very good point. To the Lord more because uh, as we watch Him move, um, I, I was, there was something else I was going to ask you uh, ask you to say, but no, it's gone. Um, I think that's it, Becky. Thank you. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. It's a pleasure. It's been my pleasure doing ministry with you. Um, let's pray. Heavenly Father, you've heard our conversation. You've heard our prayer, the prayer request that Becky has. Uh, Lord Jesus, we just uh, pray and thank you for all you have done, all you are doing, and all you will do with this ministry. Keep us, uh, our ears wide to hear from you in Jesus' name. Yes, Father. There was Amen. something else I've just remembered. We're talking about community, Spanish community. Mm -hmm. We have been praying for other communities to be involved, not um, and other religions to find jesus and right. it's like new. So, i mean i know myself i've had a real heart for some chinese churches churches um, that um, have more chinese people just because uh, again they're a culture that doesn't um grieve the same way um or acknowledge uh, certain pains exactly and and just we've been praying that there would be a way in and we kind of feel like if if there was one key couple that came and did the retreat, it would, it would just open the floodgates. But obviously, oh it's timing. But this re last retreat, do you want to share about uh, the two ladies that came in? Because we've been praying about other religions coming in so that we oh, can share right. with Jesus. And, and this retreat, through all the warfare, and but we saw incredible breakthrough right in the yeah. middle. What, you want to share what happened? 
Yeah, and it's funny because I had done some stuff during an exercise that was a little bit uncomfortable and I felt like the Holy Spirit was telling me to do it. And um, I was doing something out of obedience. And once I did it, this uh, thing out of obedience, I felt all of a sudden really insecure. Like, mm. oh, that was kind of crazy. Why did I do that? And I remember going upstairs and then Pastor Piper said, there's two ladies right there that would like to talk to you. And I started talking to these two ladies that had actually, we have these A-frames right outside our retreat center. And our retreat center is located in the hills. It's not like a track neighborhood or anything like that. So they came into the retreat center and said, I saw the A-frame about hope retreat. I want to know more about this hope retreat. And they were two Muslim women. Mm -hmm. And when I told them, I said, this retreat's a lot about Jesus. They didn't even blink an eye. Mm. Like you could tell that there was a hunger mm. for hope. Mm. Just like that lady that I talked to yesterday, she had a hunger for hope. So mm. we're getting more and more people coming because they need hope. So mm. yeah, and we want to be able to, to touch all different graphics, demographics of religion and uh, mm. people mm. to go all across the board yeah and just the last uh, statement the retreat is for men and women all men yeah. women couples. we actually we actually like men to be there don't we because they bring yes, a different dynamic to the healing for them and for the for the women and also i think a lot of the men that we've um had come as support and are totally wrecked by what the Lord does in totally. yeah, almost more surprising <laughs> than the women. They do. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Um, I just think a lot of times when I've talked about the retreats, men are like, oh, what is it for, you know, why are you asking me to a women's retreat? Yes, right. there's the majority of women, but there's always a men's group and it's, right. it's usually the, uh, one of the big, big powerful ones of the retreat. So anyway, Becky, Thank you for sharing your time with us today. Um, I look forward to doing the next retreat with you in the, of course, Palo Alto Prayer Room, which is uh, coming up um, real soon, 6th of September. So Becky also, um, obviously, if you're, anyone's been, um, helps lead that uh, Palo Alto Prayer Room as well. Becky Becky's actually really connected with our church. So we okay. thank you for all you do for <laughs> us. And uh, we look forward oh, to the ministry and the Lord growing in, in every area absolutely absolutely amen time today